So I'm going to make a little video just to document some of the conscious prep work that's done in relation to the mandala builds that we do here at Stone Mad. Uh, the mandalas themselves are actually done in a state of no mind, which requires me going into a deep meditative state so that I'm open to hearing uh, the messages from the crystals themselves as to which ones to use, what the theme is, uh, how many to use, where to place them, what direction to put them in. Um, so none of that is actually known in advance of getting into that meditative state. However, there is conscious prep work that can be done and that involves cleansing all of the crystals beforehand because you never know which one is going to be called, uh, cleaning the space that you're going to be working in and that's what I've spent the last couple of hours doing. So what you're looking at here are the basic crystals that we use in all of our mandalas. Um, you can see from the bottom of the screen uh, there are four rose quartz star rose quartzes, spheres. Uh, there's some selenite pieces. Um, the build today I was guided to work and call in the energies from Avebury and Silbury Hill. So there's four postcards there of the Avebury Hinge, Silbury Hill and Avebury in general as well as a little chalk goddess that I brought back from the trip there in October, which is made from the chalk uh, that's found in the area. Um, above that you can see uh, on the second row there are the various cards that I work with. Um, no idea if any of them want to be drawn or which ones want to be drawn, which deck needs to be drawn from, uh, so they're all out there. Um, above that you can see two little wooden bowls with rose quartz and herkimers in it as well as various different crystals. There's phantom quartz, there's uh, double terminated, there's Tibetan quartz, there's large herks. There are um, a lot of different crystals there that are grouped together, as you can see, that perform various different functions. Um, above that, you can see there is a selenite heart in the middle of the third row. Um, either side of that are four pieces of natural selenite from England. Um, the selenite is used, as I say, to, um, to basically to manifest and bring in the high vibration light and to ground your individual light pillar as well as that of Gaius. So I use it sort of like a light beacon, like if you could imagine a lighthouse in the middle of a sea. Um, that's the metaphor I'd use for the use of selenite in, in our mandalas. Um, all of those crystals then that you see above that, the clear quartz, uh, they tend to be used in almost all, if not all, of the uh, large mandalas that we build here. The second last, as you can see, the second last shelf there contains on the left top and side some calcite rhomboids. And on the top right, you can see some faden quartz. The calcite rhomboids are to stabilize the energy and also to help us with any uh, change so that we can remain flexible and change. Um, to use a metaphor, with regards to these calcite rhomboids, I like to compare them to um, earthquake proofing of a house. So if there's a lot of energy, it really helps to stabilize so that we don't lose our balance. With regards to the Fadden Quartz, that, that has to do with communication uh, to higher self, to source, God, uh, whatever you choose to call. And uh, yeah, basically it's, a, it's one that enhances communication within and without. So those are the crystals that we've prepped and as you can see there is a little blue calcite candle with a mani stone saying B underneath it. Uh, there's also some sage burning uh, in the seashell. Um, the pyramid itself is a uh, pyramid that I made uh, from 99.9% .9 copper piping which has been fitted together using no petrochemicals. Uh, the pipes themselves have been filled with crystals, with offerings, with incense and other items that are dear to me. Um, it's done with dimensions of Giza and it's gridded uh, accordingly as well. Within the pyramid you can still see that the selenite pillar is located there, uh, together with the cuttings that I respectfully harvested while in Ireland over Christmas of 12 of the Celtic trees of the year. Um, there's also the pink Lemurian cosmic, or sorry, not cosmic, uh, tantric twin uh, crystal on top of the selenite pillar, which is to enhance cosmic harmony. And this setup wanted to stay in place for this build. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Um, the top of the pyramid has changed its crystal. Um, we, for the past year, have been using an Isis clear quartz generator on the top of this. 
Um, however, this morning it wanted to be changed, so we now have a pineapple quartz, which is also known as candle quartz, which is a uh, crystal mostly found in Madagascar. This particular one is from Madagascar, and this one has a green tinge to it. Um, interestingly enough, this crystal is very, very good for group cohesion and for group stability and working within group circumstances. Um, green obviously being the healing colour and the healing ray, so it uh, be interesting to see what comes with that. So um, the pyramid has been gridded on all four corners with the Himalayan rock salt candle holders, tea light holders. Uh, this is to nourish spirit in all of the four directions. Um, we have also gridded around the base. As you can see, the black uh, crystals are hematite. They are to ground and manifest so that we can achieve that which we are looking to achieve. Um, we also have, as you can see here at the bottom, a piece of selenite, which is connecting this grid to one that's outside uh, the door of this room in the garden, uh, together with a piece of guthite, which is the black long crystal there. And at the bottom, you can see a black moonstone, we have two black moonstones and two sunstones gridded on all four sides of this, which is to um, enhance cosmic harmony between sacred masculine and sacred feminine. So we're looking to achieve balance as much as possible in all of our grids. Um, inside of the uh, pyramids themselves, we have a piece of uh, fulgurite, which is to make that which we're asking for heard, to carry it through to the spirit world, to source. Um, we also have four black obsidian arrowheads, which is to protect uh, that which, uh, to protect us all while we're working on, um, on an energetic level. And there is four pieces of turquoise, which is also uh, for protection from the four directions. So, uh, once in a meditative state, the crystals then make themselves known as to who wants to be worked with. And I'll show you the crystal cabinets that we work with. Uh, this particular shelf is the Stellar Gateway uh, Soul Star and some, um, some Crown uh, Chakra Crystals also. Um, this one is the Third Eye but also has some Crown Chakra Crystals in it. Beneath that is the uh, throat chakra shelf. Mercury retrograde is uh, going to be starting this week on the 21st. It's going to be kicking in. So I'm sure we'll be working a lot with that particular shelf in the coming days. Um, this is the heart chakra shelf. Beneath that is the solar plexus chakra shelf or navel chakra. Uh, this is actually half empty at the moment because of the fact that we have a lot of these crystals placed in a grid in another area. Um, this is the sacral chakra shelf. Beneath this is the root chakra shelf. And it's a little bit uh, hazy in there at the moment because of the fact that I had smudged each of these individual shelves already. This is um, Earth Star and also a lot of the uh, service tools that I would use for planetary healing work uh, when I'm traveling. So inside of those little shelves would be um, herbal blends and incense blends that I would use for smudging. Um, there's also some sacred water there. Uh, there's some animal totems there. Um, there's some essences there that I, I use quite a lot. Um, and yeah, that's some of the earth chakra crystals that we work with. So over here at the top of the room we have four amethyst geodes, as you can see. Um, these all have various different formations of happy calcite crystals growing in them actually, um, which are still growing. Uh, the light altar, as you can see at the top of the room, with a couple of, uh, with all of our singing bowls underneath the shelf. Um, the light altar itself is connected to the pyramid through this selenite, this guthite and this black moonstone. The centre point of the light altar is actually a triple isis crystal. Uh, she's clear quartz. Uh, on the front of her we have an ametrine crystal. We have, uh, at the very front of this piece, we have a rose quartz Ganesha. We have a clear quartz mama wolf. Um, on either side of this setup, you can see two clear fluoride octahedrons, 
um, on the screen right side, uh, which is the uh, place as the left side really because we're facing it backwards. Anyway, um, this is the sacred feminine side. So the uh, triangle in the octahedron is downward facing, which is representative of sacred feminine. And on the other side is sacred masculine and this triangle is upward facing, which is the geometry of sacred masculine. Um, on the side of the altar, we have our distance healing box there in the back with an organized pyramid that we made. Um, we have the beautiful Isis Brandenburg crystal, which we use all of the time. She travels with us as well in her service work. Um, just in front of her, there is a large calcite rhomboid, which, um, as I'd mentioned earlier, is for stabilizing energy um, and flexibility and change. In front of that, there's also a sunstone sphere, which is representative of sacred masculine. Um, and on this side, uh, that's a, a lotus um, pod, which you can see at the front. And behind that is a rainbow moonstone or rainbow labradorite, uh, sorry, um, sphere. And uh, behind that is an Isis clear quartz crystal. And in the front here is another uh, calcite rhomboid crystal. In the very back there you can see is a piece of selenite which is from a really really special location in Mexico, a Cave of Swords it's called. And then down here there's two more uh, amethyst geodes with calcite formations. This particular one, the large one in front of us, has a yellow golden calcite uh, growing out of it which is absolutely stunning. Over in the corner on the north side of the room we have the uh, little, little uh, earth altar which has the Ganesha for removal of obstacles. Either side is a Himalayan rock salt uh, tea light lamp, which is for nourishing spirit, as I mentioned. Uh, grounding that are two pieces of hematite on either side. We uh, also, we always offer our incense to the north. There is a lithium twin quartz crystal there in the middle in front of Ganesha. Uh, there's also some uh, clear quartz crystals around that. Uh, there's a mani stone in the front, which is for earth, which says Talav at the bottom, which is the Irish word for earth. Um, and the geometry there is the old alchemo, alchemical um, uh, geometry for earth. Um, also, all, all four sides of the room are actually gridded um, according to the elements you can see behind. There's a, a mani stone for earth and it's like that um, in all of the four corners and grounded with hematite as well. So that is basically it. Um, nothing left really apart from just uh, putting this phone down, um, stilling my mind and seeing what happens. So it's always a, a very big adventure. So I hope this is helpful. <laughs>